What's up folks? Welcome to Woodworking Against the Grain. Today is going to be old fashioned crackling cornbread day. I don't, some of you may not ever even heard of crackling cornbread, but it's an old timey cornbread recipe that people used to make when they would have, after they had hog killings. And we're going to make some up today. This is my grandmother's old crackling cornbread recipe and it's off the chain. We got some water boiling right here. Over there in that pot, you can't see it, but it's over there. We got some purple hull peas out of the garden that we're going to eat this cornbread with. Now, right here in this bowl, I've got a cup and a half of good white cornmeal. To that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of sugar two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. That's all your dry stuff. We're going to just stir that together a little bit while we talk about this crackling cornbread. Now, we're going to boil this water. When this water comes to a boil, we're going to pour it over this cornmeal flour mixture, and that's going to do most of our cooking for us. Then we're going to make these out into... I call them patties. My grandmother always called them pones. I don't know what that was about, but she always made crackling cornbread and what she called pones. So if you want to call it a pone, that's okay with me. Trying to get all this dry stuff stirred together good here. Right here, this is some pork cracklings. That's pork skin that's had all the fat taken off of it. Now she used to make her own cracklings after we'd have a hog killing in the winter, she'd render out the fat and make lard out of it, and you're left with just pieces of pork skin, and it's wonderful stuff. Now, what we're going to do with this, we're going to put these cracklings in this water, and we're going to let that water come to a boil. When it gets to boiling good, we're going to pour some of it over this mixture right here and stir it in good and then we'll make up our patties and we'll fry these in some oil and we'll have them for supper tonight to go with this purple hull peas we've got over here. This is going to be good stuff. Don't run off. All right, we got our water boiling here. We're going to turn this fire off out from under this. we got a pretty good boil going here. And we're going to pour some of this water and cracklings into this cornmeal mixture. And this water is hot enough to cook this meal. So most of your cooking takes place right here while you're stirring. You want to add your water a little bit at a time because you don't want to get too much in there and get it too thin because you can't take the water back out. Just add a little bit and stir it till you get a a, get the consistency of a good bread dough. Once you get that consistency, then don't add any more water to it. I'm, and I'm going to start adding this in small quantities here because we're almost there. Now these cracklings do two, diff two things to this cornbread. Number one, they flavor it really well. They also give it a unique texture, and for lack of a better word, chewability. These cracklings, this pork skin is tough, so it gives you something really good to chew there if you like that sort of thing. If you don't, don't make this. But if you do, you need to make some of this old-timey crackling cornbread, fry it up and feed it to people you love. Makes their heart grow fonder. And we've just about got this where we want it right here as far as the amount of moisture I want in that. Stir that up real good there. And it's got quite a few cracklings in it. You can see down in there pretty good. See that? Now we're going to make this into some patties, or pones, if you will. And then we're going to fry it in some good clean coconut oil and have it to eat with these purple hull peas. I'm going to make up these patties. When we get ready to fry them, I'll come back to you. Don't run off anywhere. 
All right, look here. We've got our pawn made up right here, and I got the grease heating over here. I'm going to zoom, move the camera a little bit, and zoom it in on these, uh, on this bread, so you can see it, and so you can see the frying process a little bit closer. And uh, I want to explain to you a little bit of something about the draining of this. So I'm going to move the camera right quick while this grease gets hot. And you see this made. This recipe makes about eight this size, and they're about four inches in diameter, and I left them kind of thick. And you can do that because, like I said a while ago, most of the cooking process has already been done. When you pour that boiling water over that meal, that cooks that meal pretty good. All we're going to do in this oil over here is brown both sides of these and then drain them. So I want you to see kind of this. You can make them as large or as small as you want to. This is just the size that they came out today. Uh, eight of them will feed, you know, Four normal people, or it'll feed me. I can eat seven of them and leave one for my wife, whichever, you know, however you want to do that. So I'm going to turn the camera over here on the, the grease and the drain rack and uh, talk a little bit about the, how to drain, properly drain fried food. What I've got right here, if you can see this over here, I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit more. I got a wire rack right here that's elevated about an inch off of the surface of this griddle, and I've got paper towels under it. This is the best way to drain fried food. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's chicken, uh, steak fingers, fish, hush puppies, potatoes, whatever you're draining. Anything that you take out of, of grease, don't put them directly on a paper towel because that traps the bottom and makes it soggy. Usually a wire rack like this or something like it, just a, any kind of rack that's setting up off the surface will do. Let the gr grease drain through. That way you leave whatever it is you fried crispy on all sides. Now this grease right here is getting hot, and we're not going to deep fry these. I've got just enough grease in the bottom of this pan to cover the bottom of it. And we're only going to fry these long enough from the brown good. Won't take too long at all. You hear that little skittle right there? That means I, I sprinkled a little water in that grease. That tells me it's hot enough to fry. So what I'm going to do is start adding these to this grease. Be extremely careful and don't burn your fingers. I told you to be careful, so if you burn your fingers, don't blame me. We're going to let these brown good, and we're going to flip them over, do the same thing to the other side, and drain them. Don't run off. We'll be right back. All right, we've got these ready to turn over. We're going to brown the other side of them. Turn these over real gentle. See how pretty and golden brown that is? You see it there? Roll that one over real gentle. Oh, that looks good. That's going to be some fine eating right there. When they get brown on that side, we'll drain these while we fry the others. And the peas are almost done. We'll have us some supper to eat. Stay with us. All right, we're going to see how we did here. We got a, just a little small taste of these purple hull peas that come out of the garden this year. I didn't make a whole lot of them, but the ones that we did get to pick and shell, Turned out pretty good. I want you to see this crackling cornbread here. See how pretty and golden brown that is? And you can see the pieces of crackling sticking out all over that. That's the way that's supposed to look. It's not all that beautiful, I guess. I don't know if you'd want to put that on a, on a platter at a $100 a plate restaurant or not, but around here, we consider it good eats. So we're going to taste this, see how we did. Make you some crackling cornbread sometime when you ain't got nothing better to do. See if you like it. These peas are hot. I cooked these purple hull peas, and just in case you don't know how to cook purple hull peas, wash them good, put them in a pot, cover them with water, and put four long, thick pieces of bacon in there with them. Cook them till they're tender, 
and the bacon's done, and don't throw the bacon out, eat it too. They turn out really, really yummy. Yep, that's good stuff. Thanks for watching. Come back to see us.